Knucklehead Comics Tuesday. It's fucking Tuesday. We got Lay in the building. We got Cap in the building. Cabs can't make it tonight, but he's here in spirit on Lay. My man, just chilling, brother. Chilling. What's up, Cap? How you doing? Doing pretty good. Is that in father goes shamefully? That's my son. And the other guy goes shamefully. Orion goes, that's my father. Choose fear and hate to run your life. Something you can't do. That was wrong with me from the beginning. I was doing it that way. I was going to go down that path. I worry. You thought it was Grayson? Grayson. Sorry. Got hurt. <laughs> it's like, not him. <laughs> not him. I can bring for somebody, anybody that can help and remembers. Ah, freeze. The media. Oh, no, I'm I'm sad. Sad. You're Randall Savage. With his knowledge and all that other shit and his capacity to learn. Absolutely. This, this is, yo, the only vegan I'll ever eat is, is grilled chicken wings. Because that's like vegan to me. You know what I'm saying? Because the chicken wings are supposed to be fried. But you grill the chicken wings, you put it in some sauce. Grilled and get some blue wings cheese. is vegan. That's, that's vegan. Like regular moo cow fuck milk. Put it in some Honey Nut Cheerios. Vegan. Because Honey Nut Cheerios is <laughs> good for your heart. You know what I'm saying? Can I steal the question from Cavs? I huh? got it right. <laughs> I would also Shazam? like to steal. I would also like Damn, to steal. I, I would also like to steal. You're too late. Wow. I stay loose. I stay high. I stay loose. I stay high. I stay loose. I stay high. I could do this all night. Cause I do what I like. Yeah, I do what I like. Yeah, I do what I like. Sipping goose. Sip is right. And I go with the flow. Yeah, I go with the flow. Yeah, I go with the flow. Cause I know I'm the show. In the zone. That you get elbowed in your elbow with an elbow. Got the arm bar, get the farm bar, get around with the bomb with the bomb bar. <laughs> that is gonna take you to Jersey Shore. My fat friends to stand next to me. I'm breaking up with you. Okay. Really? So who's who breaking up with who? that? <laughs> 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 what was that for? Don't let us all not talk at once. Um, was that you, Cap? Sure. <laughs> yeah, I was finishing watching my YouTube. I thought my mic was muted. Oh, I was about to say, shit, we're breaking up with her? <laughs> no, what? you know, it's those stupid AI-generated fucking text messages. Yeah. The text conversation shit. Yo, fuck it. It's Tuesday night, and you know what that means? <laughs> It's the Knucklehead Comics. We out here breaking up with bitches through using AI. You know how we do in these streets. Raise the master of that shit. He done did it 147 times. Don't panic. <laughs> Yo, but we out here. We gonna talk about King Kong and Godzilla and the X-Men. Ray has seen all three of them. And I kind of want to start with Ray's review. What do you think, Cap? Just, can you hear me first off? <laughs> yes, we yes. can hear you now. Okay, hold, one second. Can you hear me now? Yes. yes. How? My my mic's muted. Because Are you're you probably connect- not using that mic. You're probably using your, your... Yeah. I just switched it. Well then. Either um, way, continue. You are a father now. Forms powers? That's the part I was surprised about last week Holy that I didn't want to mention. That, funny enough, that's not the part I was talking about. Okay, but holy shit. When that happened, I was like, okay, that was the first holy shit moment. Yeah. And then the fucking... <sighs> we, we got fucking two jeans for a moment. 
and then we get the reveal. And that psychological warfare fucked me up for a second because I'm like, damn. That that was one where I'm like, I love the direction they're going with this. Like that was there's a lot of psychological stuff in this that I love now between just what they're doing with them, what they're doing with Cyclops, what they're doing with the idea of not having Professor X there. Like this is I like this direction they're taking with us. Yeah. But now it's making me sad because it's like we only have a limited amount of episodes left. So fuck. <laughs> but I want more. <laughs> yeah. Now we know Sinister is just around now. Like they didn't they didn't get him. But that yeah. ending of episode three, I it got me in the feels a little bit. Just doing whatever the fuck yeah. they want. Like Yo, fuck. So, uh Cyclops as he was once legendary referred to by show before this podcast, him <laughs> yelling, him sitting there proclaiming that he's not going to do to his son what his father did, and that he's not going to be a part of this conversation. And he, I was like, and yo. he walks out. Now I get the meme, because unfortunately that moment was spoiled for me, but I didn't understand it without watching the show. And I'm like, what the fuck are they talking about? And then I see it happen, I'm like, the Yo, fuck? Every- <laughs> How do you just say I'm not gonna abandon my son? I can't be a part of this. Walks away. Like the I mean, fuck? One, once he knew, once he knew he lost that that argument, dude. But that's I love how how adult this show is without it having to be like South Park or Family Guy and yeah. Or let, you know what? Let's use the word. The correct word is here. How mature. This show is, yeah. yeah, and I think you know what it is. I it, it's finally one of those where it's like they know who's watching this. Like they know the people that grew up watching the original X Men are now watching this. So you're gonna get a lot of that mature feel to it, while still it being in a way that it's like even the younger generation can enjoy this. You know, like there's mature themes while still being in its cartoon form in a sense. Like yeah. it's not too it's not too overly done in a way. It's but exactly I love it. Like it's exactly like the first time they did it. Yeah. It was a cartoon for kids with mature themes that they fucking entrusted us to get on board and learn about and talk about. Yeah. But I now understand why everyone was so pissed that I was not watching this show yet. Cause now I'm like, fuck, what took me so long? <laughs> Yo, word. <laughs> Now I want more. Now I'm like, fuck, why did I take so long? <laughs> Mr. I am the law. I'm sorry. Fucking also, damn, how do you know that was, that used to be my gimmick? Damn it. <laughs> it's the comic show. This is the wrestling show. How do you know that was my gimmick? Because gimmick? Judge Dredd was a comic, and that's what he said in the movie with Sylvester Stallone. No, but that legit used to be what I, I stole that for, for a gimmick once. Uh, oh, we'll be talking about that in a bit, Anthony. We'll be getting to our, to our reviews of all that good stuff in a bit. So you saw the movie as well? Yes, I saw it on Easter at 10.30 a.m. for some reason. Okay. Well, the, it, was, it was the resurrection of Shimu. <laughs> oh, Of she who? Well, we'll talk about it when, when we get into that review. Yo. Ray... Was telling me that there was another head for King Kador that they had. No, but we looked it up, but it's it's the same it's it's the same head. I could have sworn it was a different head. The one that they what? sold, I thought it was a different uh, Ghidorah head. What in the movie? Yeah, the post credit scene where they show the head. I don't know why I thought it was a different head than the one they used. Oh, for, you talking uh, about the old movie? Yeah, 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 yeah. No, yeah, that's the one. So remember, King Ghidorah lost one in the in the ocean. And then it regrew. Then he he grew it back. So the the head they had was the original one he lost. Yep. I don't know why I confused the two, and that's why yesterday we were talking about it. And I'm like, why am I why am I not like it wasn't connecting? But I did see the movie, so when we get to that, I'll um I'll give my input on that. But no, X Men, I'm I'm hooked. I'm in it. I apologize for taking so long, but I have seen the episodes, so we can now 
continue normally and I don't have to be crucified on the show for not watching these episodes. No, you're knowledge. still going to get crucified. Can we just be put? Can I get put through a table instead? Done. Okay. You, you heard it here. Put it through a table. He agreed to it. Yep. Even but, if I don't agree to it, it's still just gonna like it's 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 part of the channel now. It's come just, like, on, it's gonna man. Happen. Get, getting put through it. May Young got put through a table. You can you can take it. <sighs> I, I, I still said a thousand sig uh, not a thousand a hundred signatures were supposed to happen. We never made the petition. <laughs> what are you talking about? I, I've seen a hundred signatures. Where's the proof? <laughs> that I've seen a hundred signatures? For for I me, work at, I work at a front desk with people signing no, in and out no. all day. I've seen a hundred signatures. Not that cap. I'm saying <laughs> on this petition. You gotta choose your words carefully, right? Word. Uh, see, that's it. I lost because by 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 technicality, he has seen a hundred signatures. So <sighs> So, so what else is going on, guys? <laughs> and if you want, man, we can get now that we can talk freely about it without having to yeah. worry about spoilers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can, we can talk about it now. Like, now I get why you guys were so like you didn't want to mention shit because yeah. it would have it would have ruined certain like certain moments where I legit popped, like I legit popped for, but Storm losing her powers. Though, I was like, fuck. Like yeah. that moment, I was like, the, you know the weirdest thing was thinking like. Did that ever happen in the comics? Like, I couldn't remember if that happened already. So I don't think her. I don't think she lost her, like her powers like that. Yeah. I think there was a certain. I think every once in a while, certain superheroes go through like a mental block where something happens to them mentally, and mentally they their mind shuts them off from using their power. Mm-hmm. Because I do remember there was in the original one there was the whole thing with Storm being um, claustrophobic, and that was fucking with her powers in the cartoon with the Shadow King. But there was yeah. also something in the comics that happened similar. Where we found her son and shit. Yeah. <clears throat> you, you know what's funny? What hit? What made that moment of Storm losing her powers hit hard for me was Magneto's response. When Magneto fucking sat there and was like, you think I'm this way. Charles wanted me to do better. I had to try to do better. She lost her powers trying to protect me. So I had to do this the right way. Like that was like the realization like, oh shit, this is real. Yeah. It was so good though. Cause it's like, now we see that trial of like, this is what Xavier wanted. This is like, this is why he chose this in a sense. And give me one second. He's gonna go beat the dog. Yeah. What's if you don't happening? shut up, I swear to fucking God. <laughs> I swear to God, I'm gonna shoot you with that shit they shot Storm with, and you're not gonna be a dog anymore. You'll be a fucking rat. You'll be a fucking rat, I swear. I I dare you to fucking bark again. Yeah, you know, yeah, but um Yeah, and then that monologue that he fucking gave was uh was powerful as shit. Yeah. And it fits for so like before it fit with, with, with race. Now it fits with so many different aspects of life that's not even fucking funny. Yeah. You know? That, that's the great thing. <clears throat> that's what made the X-Men overall stand out and almost have like um like a league of their own effect is the fact that you could substitute the mutant gene and being a mutant with so many fucking real life things. Like even in this, even in this whole area here, I'm too white to be Spanish, but I am Spanish. So I'm not fully white. So that makes me a fucking outcast in certain situations. Like when I went to Puerto Rico, I was the white boy. Yeah. I wasn't fucking Puerto Rican there. Well, substitute the mutant gene for being light skin and being, you know, the way I am. And boom, now we have an, we have a fucking example in the X-Men who get you can literally put yourself in there for almost any situation and it yeah. works. And 
shit. That's the fucking most powerful part about this shit. It fucking... It... It's crazy because I'm pretty sure people are mad at it because of the... Like, if the, if the LGBTQ community and all those people started talking about that, you know what I'm saying? Then they will be... People be mad at oh they took the shit and yada 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 but like we said it fits with everybody like it's still with racism it's still with sexism it's still with fucking gender identity it's it's with the class shit now with the refugees you know different you know different countries the immigrants yeah. and all that other stuff it, it fits like that what he said hits home real real fucking hard and shit you know what I'm yeah and. Who who's really watching? Who's watching this and is being mad? There's no overt fucking woke message in here. It's the message that has always been a part of the X Men. Yeah. Like there, there's nothing different than what has always been talked about with the X Men. So I don't know why anybody would be mad about anything. Shit, they're always fucking mad about shit. You gotta complain about something. <laughs> like everything is complained about. Shit, the cra- the top cr- uh, crop top they wanted to complain about. Every little bit of this bullshit. A crop top. The the is it called a crop top? Whatever what? uh, in the show, one of the one of the guys had a crop top on. That it was either Wolverine or Gambit. Someone, uh, Gambit had it on, and they complained yeah. about that. But Gambit uh, always dressed like that. Barely they complained about that. Yo, when you got abs, you show your fucking abs. Like, what the fuck? Lord. I mean. You ever see you ever see them bodybuilders at the gym that wear, like, the shoestring fucking tank top shit? <laughs> You're forgetting. <laughs> we, like, come on. That's what most of these fucking wrestlers are wearing. But apparently yeah, the cartoon and fucking speedos and shit like come on. But yeah, that that is what we we, we have to <clears> deal with because they're mad about Rogue losing an ass. And apparently, crop tops. You don't because if you're gonna crop a top, you fucking block that shit. Twenty four thousand dollar alpaca. Yo, I'll tell you right now, whoever's really mad at that probably had some sort of an awakening in their mind. is like, oh, light bulb. And now they don't know how to deal with it. That's what it is. That's how, that's how nonsensical this is. Where you, I've watched all three episodes. Yeah, I can yeah. tell you almost everything about the episodes. You said crop top. And I'm like, what the fuck are you even talking about? That's how non, <laughs> that's how non But that, those are the, those are the shit you see on the internet. Cause I'm like, why are they, is that a big part of the show? And I'm like, you see it for a split second. Like, I'm like, what the if fuck? you want to be mad about anything with Gambit, mad how he's he can't touch Rogue, and now he's being cock blocked because Magneto can. Like, yeah. That I love how that was the big thing because I kept seeing that that it's like on Facebook I kept seeing like oh Magneto's definitely smashing and it's like yeah they're not hiding it I thought it was more like. Oh, yeah. like it was inferred. It's like no, no, no. You could tell. Like, see, that's the difference between somebody who only watched the cartoons and somebody who read the comics. Yeah, because I don't know how that played with you, To being somebody who only saw the cartoon for the most part. Yeah, when that came up, I already knew this. So for me, I was like, oh, they go, they're showing it. Okay, I don't know how that played for you though. Me, I was like. Oh, these actually, I was like, well, you know, I asked you, I was like, wait, Rogue could touch Magneto? Because, you know, in the movies, what Magneto did to, to Rogue, but it was, you know, like I knew to disassociate it, but I was like, Rogue could touch Magneto? And then you told me how it works. It's like, oh, okay, there you go. And then you told me like they, in the in the comics, they had a relationship. And I'm sitting here and I'm going to myself, I'm saying to myself, I'm like, I'm like, no tags. This is the one time that we're going to talk to each other because I want to congratulate you 
in manifesting the impossible coming to life. Because I've been, I'm, I'm 36. I've been 36 years old for a couple months, not for a month now, right? And I've been every year I get older. It happens my whole life. It is just one of those things that I was born with. Yep. And every time we, yeah, every time we talk about something, I always bring it up. It's like an anniversary. There are historical documents that they can play off of if they don't have any ideas for the show. And this cartoon said, guess what? Not only are we going to use one idea, we're going to use all the ideas. We're going to use the idea of Nathan Summers being born from a clone of Jean Grey. We're going to use the idea of fucking Sinister making clones. We're going to use the idea of Magneto and Roe getting together. We're going to use the idea of Forge, you know, fucking doing shit. In the, it's like, there you go. There you go. That's why I asked. That's what I was saying. like, because I, I knew some of these. I was like, okay, we've seen this. But I was like, wait a second, Storm losing her... I don't... I, I couldn't point if that happened anywhere. Yeah. At least that, in that way. In the way that they they did it there, I was like, wait, did that happen? No, so not in that specific way. Like, Okay, said. yeah, 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 yeah. That's what I was I was wondering. I'm like, but that, that I feel like was, was different. But that is... That's what I like so much about Civil War. Yeah. In the MCU. Is yeah, that yeah. Civil War was a natural progression of the movies. So if Storm losing her power is because this dude had the fucking the gun from the Sentinels shit. That's a natural progression of the cartoon. Yeah. But uh, that's all I wanted. If the movie like if the movies did something based off of the comics, that's all I want. Like like Civil War. What is that your, one of your favorite Captain America movies? Cap? Yeah, that is my favorite one. And, and that is their interpretation of what happened in the comics. And what happened in the comics is kind of close to it. There's some differences and all, but it adapted for the movie stories. They did a good fucking job. It's not like they turned around and said, oh, Civil War. All of a sudden, T'Challa's now a slave from the South, and he's running away, and this sparks the fucking coalition of... The South will rise again. And now, boom, Freddy's in there. Like, what? You're a father now. You're don't a father now. Yeah, don't tell me this shit. <laughs> like, what's going on here? That should have been... <laughs> when they got when they had the baby, that's how, that's how they should have told Cyclops. You're a father now. Yeah, you're a father now. Rogue should have just been like, there you go. You're a father now. <laughs> don't, don't do abortion. <laughs> What you think the X Men hire super people? <laughs> Fucking motherfuckers, boy, pissing me off with this shit, Ray. I can't, you know, I, I, I don't know how hard it was to do that, but it seemed like a good idea to use the. The, the stories that they said around the time that they were talking about, and boom, pow, in the middle, ready to go. Holla at your boy. And again, that just shows with that being with that happening with these, it's like cool. They have no excuse to not continue the series more and more and more. Well, they they already they already confirmed the second season of it. Yeah, well, that, that's what they said, right? The second was already done. Yeah. And then they fired the right. <laughs> yeah. Again, not not to keep rehashing that shit, but for them to turn around and be like a non-nude, non-sexual, from what I recall, OnlyFans account was too creepy to keep around. What the fuck were you doing? That That's the thing. I want to know yeah. what the fuck is on there. Because yeah. um... Without knowing... His shit probably was just a bunch of pictures of people in a hole with him doing a bo- It puts the lotion on the skin. <laughs> like, it, what it, the it, fuck it were you doing? It must fucking silence of the lamb type shit. That's what, that's what it probably was. Yo, think about it. Think about it. The gentleman, in qu- mm-hmm. uh, the director, is part of the LGBTQ plus community, right? Okay. Disney. Well, I mean, he, he is. 
No, 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 no. Again, that that just it's like okay, where do we go with this now? But my point is, Disney looked at his account and said, "You're not doing anything in a sexual manner. We still have to fire you." Which means, if you were doing something in a sexual manner, you probably would have been safer. Yeah. So again, what the fuck was he that that now? Yeah. <laughs> is there? I, this is where we have to do a little research. Is there a Reddit on this account? Because you never can find anything on Reddit. This is why I don't want to do any research. Because I don't. You don't want to go be the, down dude. the rabbit hole. No, I don't want to be the dude. Be like, yo, have you ever looked at OnlyFans? Be like, only once. Yeah, who? This guy. <laughs> like, that's my only. The only time I ever looked at it is for this dude. Nah. Nah, my research would have to start from every female from A to Z, and then I move into that one. (laughs) But the show that they created is fucking amazing. So we touched on a little bit of everything here, but another part of the the historical documents, as Toe likes to point out, they gave Nathan Summers, a.k.a. Cable, the techno virus, yes, which we know in the future he has his robotic arm because the techno virus is contained in there, and what is some ridiculous like nine, like 85 to 90 percent of his actual power is containing the techno virus in that arm, and he's still fucking strong with his mutant ability. Think of how much stronger he would have been. He probably would have been an above Omega level fucking mutant. Yeah. Yeah. Then we're not even touching on this. The crazy ass fucking conversation between now Madeline Pryor and the original Jean Grey. How do you tell which one of us is real if both of us have the memories? Who did she literally ask which one of us married Scott? Which one of us actually did this? Yeah. Like that's a mind fuck of a question right there. And that's what I love because it's like again, that now puts you in that holy shit, wait, what how, who is who? Like it's like that moment of like, wait, so what happened? What it's such a great fucking scene of them going through that that it's like, oh man, that's awesome. I love that. I love that because again, we're only three episodes in. <laughs> so imagine if that's what we're starting basically off with. What's happening next? I can't wait. I can't Sh- wait. Yo, and not for nothing. The only thing I would have said is that if I would have walked in that shit and and this girl's turning green and they got my son, I'm walking in there blasting her with the shit. Where the fuck is my son? I'm not here trying to talk to you. Let me save my son first, and then we'll try to figure out what's wrong with your bitch ass. It's like, no, we're not trying to save you right now. I yeah. want my boy. Give yeah. me my boy. Yeah, I'm and a then, father now. Also, I'm a I, father now. I'm mad, I'm mad that the first, like, the first time I watched it, that did not connect with me till the second viewing of it. That I was like, oh, yeah, that's going to be cable. <laughs> yeah. I, I didn't connect the first time I watched it. I was like, wait, he's going to the few. Ah, oh, okay, then that makes sense. Do what you did, so, Ray. I'm sorry. Oh, I knew I knew right away. But then No, again, yeah, it didn't it didn't connect the first time I watched it. So there was a question. I don't remember exactly what storyline it was, but so Magneto has this thing where because he's the master of magnetism, he can put like a almost like an EMP shield around himself to the point where he can feel physical touch but rogue's ability cannot penetrate the shield so she could touch him without fear of draining his ability like that's how they were able to touch they dated for a while and this here i mean that's cool i always forget to lower the thing on there Magnus Lencher, that is their son. Oh, shit. Now, of course, comics are weird, and they're never 
nothing's ever like a hundred percent in stone. So I don't even know if he's still canon. I don't know if they shipped him off to a different Earth or to a different realm or whatever. But that's the that's how he's able to touch her. That's their son. It all happened during the time where she actually spent with the brother Brotherhood of the Mutants because she wasn't always an X. She wasn't always an X Men. Yeah. There was a time where she thought Ro, um, Mystique was a mom, but it, it wasn't, and some other shit happened. And as we know, she got her powers because she held on to uh, Carol Danvers a little bit too long. That's why she could fly in super strength. Yeah, that didn't go away. The the super supervision and the flying of the strength. Yo, I thought it was hilarious. Where they're like, Ro. Touch the doctor and become a doctor and help us deliver this baby. <laughs> like, <laughs> wait, wait, I was going to say, wait, did she technically kill that doctor by absorbing that? Or is it just a... No, I, apparently not. But <laughs> I thought it was I thought it was hilarious that they needed Rogue <laughs> to touch the doctor to learn to go, okay, I see the head. Push. Keep pushing. Well, yeah, because what, what does she technically learn? Like... Especially since he had no, he clearly said he had no fucking um, experience with mutant pregnancies, and he's afraid of them because the baby might not be able to control whatever weird power it has. Yeah, which it technically had none when it was birthed in a sense. So it's like, yeah, what was the point of it? This is the this is the funny thing. This is the thing I like about the show. Yeah, it's because we as readers would know. But the people in the world don't know that mutant mutations normally don't manifest until puberty and or a tragic event happens that kind of forces it out. That Very happens. rare is there a story that from birth the child just does shit. Yeah, because like even with yeah. this, it's like it took Sinister taking taking him in a sense to now this is where we get this now. Like yeah. we get something out of it. But it's it was just funny to see that scene because I'm like, what if Ro couldn't do that? What the fuck happens? Now? <laughs> like again, women give cars, I uh, give cars, give birth in cars with somebody on the phone saying, This is what you do. You didn't need like wait. Also, <laughs> I, I get it, I get for the dramatic effect of it all, but never let Logan drive again in an emergency. Oh my god. That was the funniest fucking, useless, bro. Like, <laughs> well, you don't remember pregnant. You d- just fucking you, psh- you don't remember the last time they let him drive in the old show? He used to put the claws on the ground and turn with the claws. Yo, I'm telling you right now, there, there's one negative about this show. And just like I, you know, just like with most things, the negative is a me thing and not an actual show thing. This show is reminding me why I'm not a Wolverine fan. Because I know in this show, before their first episode, it was 1996, and that was 1997 for them. But for me, it was 1996. It's 2024. Jean Grey clearly picked Cyclops. Relax, Logan. Nah, he's still trying Jane to... Howlett, shut the fuck up. Go bang Utico. Go bang Storm. You have other fucking bitches. Go get them. What the <laughs> fuck, man? Yo, I think we got our clip for the weekend. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> a... Go bang other bitches. That is, that is her clip of the week. <laughs> Like, even in that part, that it's like, just focus on me. And then it's like, wait, you really care that? Like, hey. <laughs> but you, you know what's crazy? You really care that much? Bitch, you didn't need to read his mind to know that he cared for you. <laughs> He's but the only one here How right many now. times did he sacrifice his life for you? No, he did that for Madeline Pryor. We don't know how long they were switched. Give me one sec. I'll be back. That now he's gonna go find out how long they will switch. Yeah, <laughs> this is a um, 
roadie situation. We don't know how long he was a scroll. Yeah, <laughs> but there's, there's definitely a, there's definitely a good answer in there that they could take. Because what do you call it? they? They were all captured on the fucking island. Yeah. Back no. Yeah. Yeah. That's they were trying to get morph, right? That's what I would have uh, suggested. That's what I would have said. Yeah. Because they and they lost their powers there too. That that's the perfect time to do it. Yeah, I, I would. I would do that. So you're saying Wolverine is a simp? Yes. That's exactly what the fuck I'm saying. Yeah. He has to have one weakness. You know what I'm saying? Like that. The man's five foot two. As weak in the test, that's a weakness. <laughs> He's five foot two, but tell that shit to fucking uh, Hugh, Jackman. Hugh Jackman. Yeah. <laughs> that motherfucker was never five foot two. Oh, I mean, he, he was probably five foot two when he was four. Shit, months. That motherfucker. But, but shit, yeah, man, I'm loving this cartoon. I know we couldn't speak much about it last week, but I'm loving this cartoon. I hate that it's only 10 episodes. They, but- they really, if this is a testament to what the writers wanted to do and it was really the the um marvel and disney holding back the writers for the MCU and all that then okay we got something exciting going on but if this is one of those things where it's like no the old people did it you know the old people influenced them and then they're like they just had the right writers on here then it's like yo there's no excuse for any other movie. Like I know we said that for when when Godzilla minus one happened. There's no excuse, but now there's really no excuse. <laughs> like because y- you could have fucked up a cartoon, but this shit is almost perfect. The only critique that I had, I I'm not getting used to this Magneto suit. Dude, yeah, I mean, I have my little nitpick. You can have yours. That's one thing that. Don't that, shit about, but. that and I don't like the way they muted the faces for Rogue, Jean Grey, Storm, Jubilee, like Gambit. I don't like how for some reason they feel flat. They don't feel as detailed as they they look different face wise. Yeah, I, I think that that's the animated style because it's new animated animation technology trying to mimic the old shit. I, Hold on, we got a, Anthony here had a question here. So Mad, so here's the thing with Madeline Pryor and Jean Grey. Madeline Pryor, Pryor is an exact clone of Jean Grey to the point where there technically is no difference. She just took the name Madeline Pryor to set herself apart and to be her own person. But uh, she's not like Emma Frost. Emma Frost has a weird combination of power. She is a, a telepath. Or actually, she's no. She's an empath. Where she she does more than just telepathy and shit like that. She's more with the emotional side of it. And then she could turn her skin uh, to diamond, literal diamond, to protect herself from harm and shit like that. Mm. That that's the the whole thing with Madeline Pryor and Jean Grey. They're essentially the same person. Yeah, but in the '90s show, he said he thinks that the animation style from the '90s is why. But in the '90s, it had more depth. Jean Grey looked didn't look like a basic person. Like she looked like her own individual. Like in these shows, like Gambit looks like a, a his own like a basic person it i don't know what animation style to, to say like um like south park this almost looks like if they made a digital version of south park that's how their faces look it, they look flat where they where in the the comic book i mean in the 90s show they had like some depth to them 
I'm telling you, Jean Grey looked like a real woman that they drew in the comics. I mean, in the in the cartoon. Rogue look like I would be more mad at Rogue and Jean Grey's face than their ass. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm trying to I'm trying to look up images right now. All right, so here's here's them in the '90s cartoon. Yeah, so you see Rogue and and Gambit. I'm gonna try to find them now. <laughs> Don't mess with Godzilla. Your no word. What's going on, Krills? Yeah, that's Rogue now. Yeah, there's no contour of her nose. Yeah. And her lips are like it's a yeah, it's a little flatter of a Yeah, it's like don't even she doesn't look like a completely different person, but the details that make her look like a person yeah. are gone. Here's an even better look of her actually in this show. This is the, the old one or the new one? No, this is the new one. Okay, that looks a little better, but it doesn't look like her from the original. Just don't get it. I won't, nah, I feel you, girls. I feel you. You know, that, that looks a little better, but just, just for some reason, like... Uh, okay. it's, and it's not me thinking about it when I was a kid. I saw the, the, the series, like, two years so, ago. Now, for comparison, this is the original one. Yeah, you see how the eyebrows aren't as dark, the, the eyes aren't as... Like, the outline of the eyes aren't as thick. Her nose is 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 smaller and softer. Her lips are more plump. Yeah, you know what I'm saying like those are all details in a face that make the face. You know what I'm saying? Like we've seen enough Ink Master to know about the details of a face. You know what I'm saying? Shit, I almost went into Ink Master just so I can draw faces, and they were like, "No, you don't have no experience. You can't tattoo on people." I said, "Oh yeah." Watch me. <laughs> no, but but you know what I'm saying? Like the, it's just those little things that for me visually are throwing me off. Yeah. Like I said, it was there was a little bit of a feel when he did the hero landing and his hair is moving and other shit go and it it's like they layered it. Yeah. It made it all one part of the animation. Yeah. But I'm telling, yeah, I'm still gonna say this. I said it last week. I'm gonna say it again. They're really trying to make Cyclops cool for Lay. Like they want Lay to watch this and go, you know what? Cyclops ain't that much of a dweeb. But I don't think Lay's gonna do it. But I think they're trying. Yeah. Yo, this I'm I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say that this is this no. This is the best thing Marvel has done since Endgame. From from my perspective, top to bottom, this is the best thing Marvel has done. So far. So, yeah, we can go so far. Yeah, the, the, these three episodes. Yeah, okay, so... And, and we're even talking about the fact we're putting this up even against Shang Chi, which Shang Chi is my number one or two fucking yeah. movie. Are we are we also talking about uh, Guardians of the Galaxy? Well, I'm said since Endgame, from the new phases. That was, a, was part three, Guardians of the Galaxy three. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, because Guardians of the Galaxy three, Guardians of the Galaxy three is is a it good need, movie. It needed to be that good just to be normal with the rest of it. Yeah. And on top of that, it had a, it again, it had an emotional hook because there's the ending and blah blah blah. This has a this has definitely a nostalgia hook, but it stands on its own. Yeah, it's not connected to anything other than the original cartoon. Yeah, like you can you can you can not give a shit about the old <laughs> X-Men cartoon, come into this one and be like, yo, this shit is fucking dope. Nah, yeah. Be right back. It. 
it 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 holds water and it should attract newer because you know all these kids nowadays dealing with all these problems and they having uh to grow up faster and all that other shit you watch this and it it like because it it's from our generation we grew up you know with it so every kid nowadays that's, that has to grow up in the, the the situation they're in they could fit right in with these fucking the, the way the story's going you know what I'm saying? Because I, I I think a lot of shit is a lot more shit was a lot more edgier back in the day, but shit now is a lot more violent. So all we did was up the violence. Yo, shit! I can attest to that fucking that new Roadhouse movie. Was just like, how do we make it better? More violent? How do we make it worse, Conor McGregor? <laughs> Uh, JD Pardo was good in it. <laughs> oh. uh, the blonde guy in it. He's from the Mayans. He helped actually oh. with a lot of the directing of this film, too. Yo, <laughs> not to get off tangent like we normally do, but I'm assuming you saw Roadhouse. I did, yeah. <laughs> I have one question about that movie. Okay. And my God, I get They want the land. They want the roadhouse. They want the bar. Yes. Why was all that energy put towards the bouncer who just showed up? None of them harassed the owner. None of them fucking went at He had nothing to do with your shit. He just showed up. All your attention went to him. Dude, where the fuck is that for the owner? The yeah. owner literally walked up to the man who's trying to take everything from her. And went, hey, bitch, don't ever come back to my fucking shit again. And he went, okay, I'm going to go kick your your bartender's ass. Like, why the fuck you, why are you messing with him? <laughs> yeah, that, that part I didn't understand because it's like, I guess it's inferred that they were already messing with her. And then now that he's here, it's like, now we're going to fuck you up. <laughs> Dude. Yeah. I, Yo, that's even, the dumbest plan. So that's the dumbest plan in the history of movies. I need to make this owner lose the bar and all this shit. So what are you gonna do? Let's send rowdy people in there and just start bar fights every day. Okay, they got a better bouncer. Well, we gotta kill the bouncer then. Wait, what? Why not go after her? Why not try to burn the motherfucker her? down after it closes? Yeah, like your your big idea to mess with her is just force her to hire security. Yo, 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 <laughs> yo, get this though. Get the genius in this. I want to paint a picture for you, Ray. Okay. We need the bar. Girl won't give us the bar. Break some tables. Girl hires bartender. We don't like bartender. Now we're gonna fuck bartender up. Can't fuck bartender up. Okay. What does he love? He spoke to a little girl in the bookstore, burned down the bookstore. Why? Because we're going to get in the bartender's head. Okay, cool. Why couldn't we burn down the bar when no one was in there and then we get the bar? Fuck that. Burn down the bookstore. We're killing the bartender. This became personal now. It's not about the roadhouse. You know what? What? This movie became about everything, but it's like the piggyback (laughs) off of Toe's fucking thing. We're going to burn the bookstore, beat the little girl to make the bartender leave, uh, to make the bar, the bouncer leave. Yeah. Okay. So the bouncer leaves. Cool. Did you get the roadhouse now? No. <laughs> We're going to so break more you, tables. So you beat a kid for what? <laughs> yeah. The movie, the movie was like, oh, man. This, this is another reason. Don't, don't. Yo, and for anybody here who thinks we're just shitting to be shitting, up, the original one, the the, the guy who wanted the fucking up, double Liam? deuce, no, the guy who wanted the double deuce was fucking with the bar with the owner, was fucking with all the owners for the other stores, yeah, was fucking up all the shit, forcing and, Dylan to fucking do everything he was doing, and when he didn't show up and go, oh, new bar, uh, new fucking security, let's kill him. And when they hired him, he changed shit around and stopped the rowdiness. And what they do, change tactics. Stop their beer run. It was always about the bar. 
If they if we can't stop them from going out of business, then we can stop their supply. Yeah. If we don't have no beer, don't worry about it. I know a guy. And then, well, it looks like we can't intimidate you and we can't do this shit. How about you work for me? Nah, I don't work for bitches. Okay. Now I'm going to fuck you up because you called me a bitch. You insulted me. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, he gave this guy every opportunity to leave. And then say, you know what? All right. It's time he gets hurt, too. But it was always, give me the bar. And you're not getting it. Fuck him up and let's go get the bar, please. All right. <laughs> Chris Tucker. <laughs> like, like, and then, Oh, and I love I love the fucking... My daddy's the sheriff. I, I kidnapped your daughter. He didn't really kidnap my daughter. Yes, I did. What? Nigga. <laughs> what? And how did she get a how did she get free from this? In a wave? <laughs> this, that window. woman, yo, the doctor, I understand in the original, healed his wounds. She's a doctor. No. You do that. I don't know how this bitch turned fast and a furious kung fu fighter and beat up 40 people in the middle of a wave battle. Like, no. You sit your ass down and let this man fucking... M let this MMA fighter, Sean Shirk-looking motherfucker, beat up everybody. Now, all of a sudden, he's a kung fu master. Oh. oh th so, this had the one problem that we discussed with, uh, with the crow. Yeah. The potential problem I have with the Crow remake. Yes. In the original, Dalton killed somebody, but was 100% remorseful, 100% didn't mean to do it, was trying to do the right thing, didn't really want to get to that point again. We never find out why he killed his friend in the ring. Yeah. He was losing, then he got mad, and he killed he fucking beat him to death we never understood why and the only time they bring it up he goes hey i know what it takes to get to this point i'm here now I'll fucking kill everybody what the new roadhouse uh leon yeah how the fuck am i supposed to get behind this man yo this this is what i don't get in the i watched the original recently so i it's fresh in my mind okay in the original this guy had no choice but to kill him even yeah. his boy was like, yo, it was either you or him. Now, yeah. man the fuck up. You know what I'm saying? And also, when he left the bar in New York, he went to the garage and he, he brought his fucking Mercedes and he drove down to, to Florida to the Double Deuce and he, brought, he bought a fucked up car with extra tires and because he knew he was going to start problems. And people yeah. vandalized his car. He changed his tires. He went to, got the windshield. Every time they fucked up the car, he's like, I don't give a shit. This is a fucked up car. I bought this so I knew, because I knew you guys were going to fuck this up. Yeah, he had, was, a, he had a feeling. Of it, yeah. yeah, he was a professional bartender that cleaned up fucking, um, fucking nightclubs and bars and shit like that. Yeah. Bouncer. Do the bouncer. But like he was a he was a professional bouncer. Yeah. Dolan was just some guy that could fight. And I'm sitting here going, I really like the original story for that. It's like, why would I like, yo, I'm just going to get you to fight. What? Then what? What? The, Dalton was literally like, yo, I'm here. He observed the first night. Didn't get involved. This the, when the, in the next morning he said, okay, here goes you guys, you guys, you guys severance pay. Get the fuck out of here. You guys over here. You're going to be this. This is the new rules. Take that gate down. We don't need it. He's taught. Other people had to be bartenders, had to defend themselves. And he wasn't just sitting there going, all right, y'all do all the work. He was doing the shit. He was in charge. He ran the motherfucker. He got paid to do his job. Yeah. And it was it was one of those things where it's like, this guy's the best. No, he's getting old. I heard you're the best. Not, oh, I saw you fuck some dude up. I want you instead of for that dude. It was like... Wait, are we doing Lionheart or are we doing Roadhouse? Yo, my another one of my favorite things that I just thought of as you're giving your summation. Yeah. When when Jake Gyllenhaal is leaving, the bartender's like, oh, you're just going to let him scare you off? Bitch, they burned down another fucking store and beat a kid because I'm here. Yeah, I'm leaving. 
Like, what, what the fuck am I staying for? They can't get your bar? They couldn't get your bar with 15 other fucking security guards here. So you don't need me specifically. Yeah. I'm hurting other people. Why the fuck am I staying here? <laughs> Work. <Yeah. laughs> like you said, I don't understand what that one roadhouse has to do with the fucking complex they're building about 5, 10, 15 miles away. They never explained that neither. Like, oh, we're going to tear it down and build a garage or we're going to tear it down and plant trees. Here's how, here's how dumb that they didn't even think about. They <laughs> literally say in this movie that the pier in the back can't take fucking shipments. Yeah. So then you don't need the waterfront real estate because you can't bring ships in and out of there. Yeah. Or you can't bring boats or anything in and out. Ray looks scared because I'm Conor McGregor. Yeah, man. We're Conor McGregor. Guy. Did, did anybody else <laughs> around this, did anybody else feel like they turned around and was like, all right, here's the movie we're making. Connor, we want you to be in this. And the director went, fuck. <laughs> he can't act. So, Connor, here's the movie you're in. And they shot two different movies. I and just smashed them together. Yeah. Like, yeah. Connor McGregor thought he was making a live-action Looney Tunes. <laughs> and, and Doug Lyman was actually trying to remake fucking War and Peace. And Citizen Kane. What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it did not feel like even the fucking the this the scene that they they've clipped so many times. The fucking where is everybody? It's just like yeah, yeah. And yo, here's the thing: he would have been so much more like scary. One, if he let his shoulders down. It's just normal, normal height for shoulders. No. That is hands down to your sides. Right? It kept quiet and smiled and la and, and did that little chuckle when it's inappropriate. Like when like you stab Jake Gyllenhaal and he's standing there, he's like, ah, and he's like ready to fight, and he does the ha ha ha. I like you. And then, then goes the, it's like, oh, you a crazy nigga, huh? Yeah. Yeah. But no, I can't park. That's how I'm going to tell you I'm crazy. We you ran it. into the tree every time you went to that house, Ray. We said it as we were watching it. GSP probably would have been a better choice. Oh, for the villain. Ten, 10 times. Fucking GSP, at least again, we've seen how he acts. We've seen. Yeah. Like he would have been perfect for this instead of Connor. Which I'm I get why Connor is because of the they, they, they want the name of it, but like I'm just it happy didn't, it didn't add to it, in my opinion. I'm just happy that they didn't go with Ronda Rousey. Was she supposed to be in this? She was supposed to be Jake Gyllenhaal. Really? Yeah, she was originally scheduled to to be Dalton. Um yeah, I'm glad they went with Jake Gyllenhaal. Cause I mean, dude, with shit, with the way I described the movie and my problems with it, the fuck would have been the difference? Sure. <laughs> Yo, I had no idea why Post Malone was in it. He got fat. Was he supposed to get fat? No, that is. No, I just think that's how he is. Yeah, <laughs> that's how he is, though. Oh, I thought he was at least skinny. I didn't. Nah, man, because all... <laughs> that's 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 what happens. It all you're drinking for a while is Bud Light, and Pepsi. Jake Gyllenhaal is rumored to be the next Batman for the DCU. He better not be. Nah, I don't care, to be honest. <laughs> but to be honest with you, Batman needs a coldness to him. Yo, the guy who plays Reacher. It'd be the first Yo, time ever we get a fucking massive Batman. In, in, in that AI. AI yeah. In that AI shit, they had Reacher as Colossus. AKA Colossal, because that motherfucker couldn't read. And they had um Superman. Uh uh, uh Henry Cavill. Henry Cavill as as um Cyclops. Hmm. 
There's there's uh, some AI art or fan generated art of Henry Cavill's Wolverine. That looked pretty good. But everybody wants him to be Captain Britain. Because of his accent. <laughs> Probably. It's like, oh, let's let's get him to. I purposely said it like that, Cap. I don't think you did. I don't think you could do an actual English accent. Sporty. <laughs> no, and that's how that's how show did it once. I mean, right? enough, that is that is what they call somewhat of a Cockney accent. Yeah, there. but like a legit. Don't worry, I can't do accents to save my life. So, nah, uh, 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 we could all just do the Osprey. Just say bruv. I can't even say that. Oi, won't you shut your mouth? You're talking too much shit here. Why not run this car up your ass? Now, see, it almost sounds you, like you're trying to be Australian instead of... It went a little bit Australian Brooklyn. <laughs> <laughs> you, I'm a gangster, you started, yeah? out, you started out with, oi, and ended up with, let me tell you something here. Let me you tell you something, you fucking mongoo. <laughs> 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 you fucking got a ghoul in the face looking motherfucker. Let me hey, tell you something. Leave the gun. Take the cannoli. Yeah. Where's that from? Godfather? Godfather. I, you know, I still to this day have not seen the guy. I seen bits and pieces. I seen the part where it started and Homeboy got out of the, the, the toll booth and they shot the shit at him. Like there was only bullets left of his body. This is funny to me. I think it was part three or some shit. This is funny to me because there was at least a three-day stretch, like maybe two years ago, where I walked in and Toe was watching all three Godfathers for three days. No. That's what Not it felt me. Like. Not me. Yeah. It was, I was the, on the TV when you were in the living room. And I, when I was there, probably dead, I would I would never... I was trying to watch them, but they didn't have them anywhere. AMC was playing them. AMC always plays them. Nah, they, they, you got Nene Paramount. I, you probably see me watch the fucking Casino or um, Goodfellas because I always watch those shows. Dude, I know the difference between those. So, you, so you've never seen The Godfather in its entirety? No. Okay, we now know what we must do. Uh, yo, we got to get a week that. off. We ran a Tesla. We go to us. We go to to, to show's house, and we go watch all three of the Godfathers. And then, what's it gonna take? Like seventy two hours to watch the Godfathers, give or take. That's how long they are, right? Nah, but the first one is, is a really great film. I'm a fan of the first one. Yeah, but shit, we gotta go to show's house. We get we all get our oil changed and watch and watch the cars. Ray's gonna buy a car just so he goes change the oil. That, that's all I'm gonna do. Then I'm gonna give it back. Yeah. I was gonna say, what kind of car are you driving, Ray? <laughs> I don't know, but guess. I'm gonna buy Let one just so I could. Let me guess. An eighty thousand dollar Range Rover. Yep. There you go. He got one of those um the T Rexes, the three the three wheeler shit. Sh- sure. That's yep. You see how he shushed you though? I said sure. sure. I said sure. sure. You did it like Jason. Shh, shh, ah, 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 shh, 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 sure. <laughs> uh, okay. Sorry. Your your money's not gonna take you that far in life, Ray. <laughs> oh wait, like... I forgot that is part of the the thing here. <laughs> apparently, apparently I'm rich because that one time I spent sixty dollars on lunch. Yeah. That one time. You also got two couches, a whole fucking bar to yourself. A new phone. I don't have a new phone yet. I you change your hair color. Well, your mom, you got, the, you got your mom phone. a new phone. Well, yeah, because her phone fucking died. Her phone died. Yeah, okay. And he what didn't want to wait. Do? He didn't want to wait six months for a replacement phone. No, because... Because you're bougie. If you guys want to hear the story, it's on one of the episodes of the fucking Tone the Show show, where I legit waited Three weeks and said, nah, fuck this. I'm just going to buy a new phone. See? Oh, yeah. fuck. Oh, Ray got a Shia LaBeouf Bumblebee. Bro, I wish. Yo, nice you, want a, you want proof? You want proof that you're rich? Okay, what is the proof? You waited three weeks and said, nah, fuck that. I'm going to get a new, I'm going to just get you a new one. Yeah. 
You didn't wait three weeks for your check to come in from work. You just waited three weeks. Yeah. So fuck That's it. That's how you rich. You can wait three weeks and not have to worry about, am yeah. I getting paid this week? It was like, man, you want the iPhone 15? Wait three weeks. That's your. That's that's how it's you show penance. that you owe me. And I, I don't even think it was literally. I don't think it was three weeks either. I think it was two weeks. Me? me? Yeah. Because no, no, no. Yeah, it was two weeks because the week of supposedly that she had to do her chores. And, uh, Jesus. <laughs> the week that supposedly the replacement model is gonna be sent, and then when we went. They're like, no, it's not gonna be ready for maybe another. I'm like, fuck this, and I bought the phone. Yo. Yeah. $600 that fucking Louis Vuitton phone. Word. Oh, with the glasses. With the glasses. The Scott Summers. See the red on the bottom? He's shooting lasers at you, Cap. Yo, he's, 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 he's visually calling you nice. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, there's a whole undertone here of, of him talking about everything he's gone through. And all I hear is, the more money you have, the more problems you have. Word. You yeah, see? But yo, I'm telling you, man, we need to make not cancel culture come back, but we need to make uh Oh, that wait, yeah. I'm getting canceled? No, 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 not you. Just do your fucking job, culture. Cause you triggered me with the whole they ordered the phone, and when I went to pick it up, they said no. It's not ready. What I heard was I went to pick it up and they said, oh, nobody put the order in. So uh, give us another two weeks. We need people to do their job the first time. Facts. Because get this, Ray. I'm going to say it. I got the balls. The connect, the, the Mercedes connect me app, right? I told you I, I got the services and all that. They said, wait 48 hours. It should come on. I waited 48 hours. It didn't come on. I call them back. They said, oh, this is a problem. I said, no shit. Thank you for noticing. He said, we're going to bump this up the chain to the text. Give them at least five days to diagnose a problem. They should call you up and let you know what's going on. Six days pass. Hello. I was waiting for a call from the text because they bumped up my shit. I never got any of the services I paid for. Um, I don't see that in any of the notes. So what do we do now? Well, I'm going to try to troubleshoot the issue with you. Give me a second. I'm going to put you on hold. She puts me on hold. Sorry for putting you on hold so long. I'm on. Uh, I'm in the chat with my supervisor, and he's, he's, he's about to, you know, tell me what's going on. Oh, your car doesn't do on it, over the air updates. And in my head, I was like, that would have been nice to know three weeks ago yeah. when I first contacted you about this issue. And I told her, I said, she goes, so what was the diagnostic date that they ran? I said, nothing. They just said, wait 48 hours, wait five days. I was expecting you to tell me to wait a month. You know, I was waiting for the day that I sold the car for the shit to start working. And she <laughs> she, she just stood quiet. And I'm like, I don't want to yell at you because you seem like a decent human being. But I really want to just be like, yo, at Mercedes, do I have to yell at your fucking employees for something to happen? Or can I just like be an adult? Can yeah. I get what I paid for? Exactly. And that's the issue. <laughs> that it's like, yo, that's all you're asking for yeah. is simple, just the shit you paid for. It is transaction. I give you money, you give me product. Yes. <laughs> that's all you want is just what you paid for. Yes. You reciprocated. Like, give me my shit, please. Uh... I would like it. I pay for it. I would like it. It's like, <laughs> what's the name of that movie with with uh, Jamie Foxx? He's in the gas station, the sip and zip. Oh, uh, <sighs> fuck! It get something. Well, any Ray, have you seen it? I, I, I think I know up. what you're talking about. They thought he was Mike Tyson, and he starts oh, singing the yeah, yeah, that he, yeah. Oh, reasons. Oh. Pieces that you hear. You know, so when the robbers go to the gas station and he goes, You sure you want the tropical spring douche? I heard that this douche is better. He goes, This is what I put on the fucking counter. This is what the fuck I want. Like, like that's how 
how I feel. This is what the fuck I paid for. This is what the fuck I want. I don't want to wait no longer. I didn't pre-order this shit. I ordered this shit. Give me my shit, please. And the movie's held up as the, the Jamie Foxx movie. Held up, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I thought she was Mojo World for a minute, but it's just pre moth Death Ray. Damn. He's going to hit you with a Death Ray, Ray. Um, we got to start calling you Ray Ray. Wow. <laughs> My, the match is still not happening, Pete, but it's all good. It's not happening. Do it at a Mercedes dealership. Let Moth run wild there. Put a, it's like a Moth in a Mercedes. Just <laughs> Motherfucker. <laughs> Yo, I really, I really, I was trying. I was trying to do it right, Ray. I was trying I to be civilized. I was trying, like, you know what? It's a good call. Let me let them take it. Nope. No, 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 no. I want to shoot you in your face right now. I don't even, like, yo, they, they, they send me surveys and I'm like, yo. All right, here. I'll give them all fives. Fuck it, because I got what I needed done. Yeah. Now I'm going to be on some zeros. Why? Because you don't know what the Mercedes Me app is talking about, and the Mercedes Me app don't know what you're talking about, and I have to pay more money for not getting shit. That's horrible. I had to pay more money to not get shit. I'm going to scream Ray's name like Ricky Boys of Hooray. Yo, I, I, yo, you should make a scene like that. That'd be dope. Just see Ray running down the, the alleyway. <laughs> fucking Moff is standing outside of a fucking Escalade. <laughs> How about we just, we, just, we, we, we just leave this as a thought here? And not do that. Like, uh, yo, listen. This camera's around. He's already agreed <laughs> to be put through a table. Yeah. I, that's it. It does not it's not gonna happen on the twenty sixth because I do I'm have flaming I, I, I have a commitment on the twenty eighth, so I would like to not be injured for said commitment. A flaming dragon table. Again, right. It's a table, bro. It's a wrestling table unless yeah. unless they're using the AEW's women's wrestling table. You're not gonna get hurt. <laughs> the AEW women's wrestling table is made of fucking granite. <laughs> Yo, dude, it's made out of the same cement they used to make out of the fucking cows in that Rob Zombie Halloween movie. <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> Jesus. I'll never forget that fucking that that ambulance hit the cow and flipped over eighty two times. I was like, what the fuck? They hit a cement cow like shit. Yo, that's what they basically should have hit because fuck, that shit did not want to move. But um, I am making it to the 28th, Pete. I am a man of my word. I have fucking said I was going to do commentary and I will be there. I'm going to be there. Um, In a what, body uh, cast. <laughs> <laughs> or, or what did Sergeant Sergeant say? A diddy bag. A diddy bag. A diddy, diddy, diddy bag. Oh, sorry. Um, sorry. I forgot. In today's day and age, we can't use the word diddy. Nope. It's fucking tainted. An nope. itty bitty no diddy bag. <laughs> Pause. <laughs> word. Why'd they make X-Men 97 perfect? Tell Why? them, Cap. Because the, the historical documents. They actually followed the comics. They actually continued the story for what they started out in, back in 1995 and 96. They actually have competent writers. They actually have writers who love the product. They actually have a showrunner who, although he was fired, clearly loved the product. They're taking this seriously. They're not treating this like this is some fucking Disney X shit or a Disney kids show. This is a pure Marvel show for pure Marvel fans and for people who grew up watching it and now are an adults consuming this animated show. That's why it's so perfect. Legit. And if I remembered the fucking Jim Carrey thing from Liar Liar, I would have added that shit in there too. But I can't remember everything. It's there you go. <laughs> nah, it is fucking great though. The show is nicely done you so have... far. 
Um, yeah, I, I'm, I, I now understand why. <laughs> like, I, funny enough, the call, why I jumped off for a second was a friend of mine calling me to ask, <laughs> "Have I finally seen X Men?" And yes, I finally seen it. I enjoyed it. It's amazing, and I can't wait for the next fucking episode. Yo, you know, you know, it's funny. You got friends calling you about the. Uh, have you seen the X Men show? My boy is calling me, dude. Have you been watching wrestling lately? Have you been seeing what The Rock's doing? I'm like, nah, I haven't. I haven't watched it. It's like I, I pretty much got the story. I'll watch. I'll see WrestleMania. And I'll. I'll get it from there. Yeah. No, the you, the the consensus of it you'll be able to get in the first fucking promo. I got it. it it's the blood. It's the Hiawafi family or whatever they're called versus yeah. the Rhodes. Yeah. As long as Cody Rhodes wins, I'm all right. And again, either way, I don't give a shit. But if he doesn't win now, don't ever give him the fucking title. Walk away, because I'm not doing this again. I'm not. Yeah, this, this has to be it. Win now, just that's it. It's not happening. Yeah. Um, they even made the shittiest Magneto costume bad. I like the costume. I like the costume fucking Magneto has. I don't. I don't like the fact that he's rocking a uh, fucking what looks like a sleeveless silk red dress. I, okay. With that, a giant M on it. I, I actually liked it. I don't know. I thought it was. I thought it was a a nice look to it. Yo, you want to talk? Here's 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 something that nobody's brought up that yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna fake cry about. Not sure. How insensitive is it that fucking Bishop is branded with an M over his eye for mutant because of what he is in the future? The black character has got a brand over his face, but Magneto wears an M for Magneto proudly. How the fuck is that now that sensitive? Given Magneto's history. And... The only other black character in the show so far, besides Forge, who just showed up, no. lost her powers. Yeah. Yeah. And due to the gender pay gap, she doesn't get paid as much as Logan to teach at the school. <laughs> right? Every other fucking uh, weather master does, you know, gets paid more than her. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You want to... Not, not to get this is like a tone to show show thing, but I've never I've never worked a job where I got paid more than anybody who fucking worked with me, man or female. I have a medal and a ribbon sitting in my uh, in my closet that I was awarded for doing some shit when I was in the military. The two females that I work with who did nothing in comparison to what I did. Also have that fucking ribbon and medal for what I did. So, I I personally have never seen a gap. But hey, take that for you know. Take that Ray. Tell them how you feel about the woman's gap, Ray. Uh, I got... What do you? <laughs> you know the only gap that uh, Ray cares about is that thigh gap. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We're gonna we're gonna go to Pete's comment. <laughs> the only the only gap the uh, Ray's concerned about is the kitchen gap. Jesus. <laughs> uh, there's one visual error in the show. It's not per. What's the visual error? I guess it's Rogue's ass. Uh, I guess. Yo, hold on. And again, I'm I'm Spanish, so I'm I'm, you know, I know exactly where my loyalty lies here. But we just looked this up a moment ago. Let me see if I can find this again. <laughs> and this, again, is Rogue. Right? Okay. But then this is Rogue from the original. How come nobody's mentioning another part that has been downplayed? Yeah, the V oh. in, the, in the top of her neckline. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's what's missing. Nobody else has mentioned the fact that she's got a deeper V now. And no yeah. tits. 
You can't see Magneto's Holocaust tattoo. Oh. Wouldn't that be on the back of his neck though? No. Should be in the on the forearm. Oh. Why'd I think there was in the back of the neck? Bro, oh, because that's what these people were putting the barcodes on. Yeah. Yeah, it is. yeah, that's a completely different thing, but but you know I mean it is at the end of the day it is a cartoon. And how far do you really wanna you know, do you really wanna push something that we just finished stop the the the, the stop abusing the Jews commercial. We don't need the barcode on the forum now because then it's going to start a, a riot. It's, it's one of those well, where, again, you know, it, it's, we, if you know the story, you know it, but I yeah. feel like they might not want to bring that up. And just for people who are listening who don't know what's going on, it's not a barcode. It's a serial number. Yeah. I, 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 I just want to make sure that you that. No, I knew it wasn't a barcode, but it it was just because people were putting barcodes on the neck and other people were like, don't you know that's what they did with the Holocaust? Like, not barcodes, but they put serial numbers on there to identify you and a barcode is an identifying mark for, like, property and shit like that. Like, you scan this and you know what the fuck is going on? You You know what's funny? For a little bit, I was thinking of getting a barcode tat. And all the numbers corresponded with birthdays of everybody in the family. Mm-hmm. So when you scanned it, it just came up with the birthdays of everybody. Nice. Can you scan a tattoo? Welcome. Yeah. Yeah. If you if you do the square one, yeah. Oh, the QR code. The QR, yeah. Oh, okay, okay. <clears throat> Technically speaking, if you do an actual barcode the right way, you should be able to scan that as well. Yeah, because it, it matches just, the pattern. It should scan be able- it for light and the dark. Okay. Which means I don't think you should you would be able to get one because then it'll just be a dark line, a slightly lighter line. <laughs> Word. Especially fucking two minutes out in the sun and then it'll become a camouflage tattoo. <laughs> it'd just be a big ass black box. <laughs> Yo. People, people like yo, Vic. What what kind of tattoos your brother got on the back of his neck? Oh, it's a black box, like in a plane. If he ever gets lost or damaged, we could just recover it and find out what happened to him. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, and there you go. That shit. Speaking of black boxes, perfect segue to Godzilla and King Kong. Because still, even though. It's 2024. There's only one black man in this movie. And no Spanish men. We haven't made it this far. We well, haven't made it to man, Hollow Earth yet. The Spanish man was the one who, who made uh, Robo Godzilla and got killed. See. Him and his daughter. No, wasn't that Asian? Man? No, that, the Asian dude was piloting it. Piloting it. But the Spanish man was the leader of Apex. He's the one who created the shit. See. So. Wait, 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 wait. Besides that, I just want to throw out there that Monarch, the TV show on on, uh, YouTube TV, on on, uh, Apple TV, it's a good show. Definitely worth a watch. But they lied to us. Because every day in Hollow Earth was 10 years. Or was a year. And remember the girl, I've been in here for 57 days. No, you've been here for 57 years. And these motherfuckers are traveling through Hollow Earth like it's a vacation. Yeah, so, they made it seem a little... A yeah, little so, too... yeah, a little too rough. Yeah. So, the only thing I can surmise from that is that within the within the few years in which they they did the Monarch show happen because it's supposed to have happened after 2014's act first Godzilla and before King uh, before King the Monsters. 
So within that, their knowledge of the hollow earth is such that they know where the temporal anomalies are and where the normal parts are. Because if you notice, where they were standing doesn't look anything like the hollow earth we see in the movies. Yeah. I'm just saying. That I'm just saying. No, I, I got it. But I'm trying to trying to give them the best argument that I think they have. Yeah. But go ahead, Ray. We're gonna let you go first with the King Kong and Godzilla. Because I'm pretty sure you didn't watch last week. <laughs> I did watch the movie, so before we take yeah, well, we're put that to the test. We're we're putting to the test if I saw the movie when I saw the movie. Did I you watch both movies? Because you didn't watch all four episodes of X-Men. There's a second movie to watch? Yo, you could come out here and say you did something. Just like I could say I did Jumping Jacks before the show starts. Did you? Prove I didn't. Mm, see? Burden of proof is on you, Ray. <sighs> okay. So, no, you want my proof? That I thought... We're going to start with this question. Did anyone else think that the little girl was going to merge with Mothra? No. No. I thought that. I thought when I, her, her energy started like that phasing a little bit. I thought she was about to turn like almost. I don't know if you guys going to get the reference, but almost like how Digimon used to merge with their Digimon. Yeah. I thought we were about to get that. I was like, are we about you, to lose this little girl to Mothra? You know what I thought was going to happen? What? When that woman came out of the light right before they released Mothra, yeah, I thought that was gonna be her twin. Oh, okay. yeah, because they're supposed to be twins that control Mothra. Yeah, yeah, little twins like that big. I knew. I don't so get I knew. Twins. I don't do abortion. For a second, when they got, when they finally found like the tribe, I was like, "Is this the the woman that that got her? Like the one that was controlling everything?" For a second, I was like, is that about to be her mom? Like, we're about to have that yeah. continuity of all this? Yeah. Because like, she, she looked, I guess that was kind of the point, like, to make her look at least similar. But I was like, she looks like that could play, like, her mom. Oh, yeah. you, you just did a racism, Ray. Yeah, it's fucked all up. All the tribe people look alike, man. Yeah. Okay. It's, it, no, it's not good enough I that said... these are the same people that you was a part of, but she looks like you now. That's your mama. <laughs> Racist. Where's Maury at? I said the one woman and her looked alike. I did say the whole mm-hmm. tribe. Mm-hmm. Jesus. Next thing you know, raising the back, they all look alike. I just Sucky said two ducky people crack. looked alike. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, that's how it starts. So to answer that, to answer your question, that I did not think that she was merging with Martha because I know enough of the story to know that that there's always an entity that. Is like a, a weird handler of Martha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, again, I, I I knew that would that was the case, but I just for some reason I was like, this is a different take if that was the way they were gonna do that. But no, that I enjoyed. Um okay. Usually I feel like the biggest complaint with these movies is the human element. Yeah. Outside of minus one, like minus one, <laughs> it's in its own fucking perfect fucking yeah. movie. Um, the human element actually mattered in that one. I actually did not mind them in this one. I, in this, I want to say in like 1.5 act, like from that half point to the end to the second act, they now now mattered because at the beginning I'm like, here we go, the humans are annoying again, and then it was like, okay, now I enjoy the humans because <laughs> the start it's like, just get to the kaiju's. Just get to the kajus. This doesn't. It, we don't care. And then it's like, okay, now it's good. Yeah. Like maybe to. Oh, I guess the best way to put it. Once Mikael dies. <laughs> oh, spoiler alert, everyone. Um, once Mikael dies, then it Ooh. starts getting okay. The first pilot. Oh. I'm the leader of this mission. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, the one that Sweet. dies to a tree. Yeah. To a fucking tree. Like how how fucking ready he was and all that shit talk and dies to a fucking tree. But I would I would complain about why is the shortest man in this movie getting killed? 
by a tree. This heights is I you thought know, it was more supposed to be the joke, like the guy that's supposedly so ready for this mission and everything dies the most shortest stupidest. one there. Yo, I, I, I don't think he's no, what, because he's not tall enough to be a doctor. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You know what I got out of that? What I got out of it that the writers were one day trying to they were like, yo, we need a we need a scene of tension and we need a character to die. How are we gonna do this? And somebody else in the writer's room went. I have an idea, gentlemen. Has anybody ever seen a movie called Deep Blue Sea? <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, Samuel L. Jackson gives his whole rowdy speech before getting eaten by a shark. How about we do that with this man? <laughs> we have him sit there and do a whole bunch of shit, and bam, eaten by a goddamn tree. I can see that. I can see it. But I, I tell you, yo, I, I didn't mind the, the the human aspect of it. some of it was funny. Yeah, it was fast though, fast pace. Yeah, the movie, the movie before you know it, it's done. Yeah, which I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Like before I know it, I'm like, I feel like wait, they just beat the, wait, that's it. <laughs> like it's like it feels like oh, we're about to get into like the third act. Like no, now it's about to be an even greater foe that we didn't expect. Oh no, yeah. no, it's just done. Like that's it. Oh, um, cool. I I guess like, but which I guess that a movie should want want you to want more. I would assume, but uh. it it should want you to want more after the movie. Like, damn, I can't wait for part two. Not, yo, I really wish they would have like shown King Kong doing shit other than. Fighting the whole time, like you know, like or, or Godzilla is like, yo, this movie legit. Eddie Kingston needs to watch. Eddie Kingston, please watch this movie. This is the definition of on site. Godzilla saw King Kong and said, "I told you, stay down there, womb," and they started fighting on site, nigga. No, wait, no, no, King no, no, Kong no, no, was no, like, no, wait, 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 no, no, no. He said, "On site, baby." <laughs> wah, 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 no, I was gonna, I was gonna say, no, they didn't start fighting. <laughs> Godzilla start whooping Kong's ass. <laughs> that's word. what happened. So I said, I thought I told you to stay a fuck. Spear. Vertical <laughs> suplex. Word. Son was jumping Kong <laughs> with the most perfect suplex I've ever seen. I was mm -hmm. like, yo. Yo. Th that was the thing about these kaiju fights. They brought out every wrestling move you could think. We saw spears, yep. suplexes, drop kicks, back suplexes. Yeah, the, the 3D. Kick. Yeah, oh, the 3D <laughs> between King Kong and Godzilla with the other monkey. Oh, oh like, <laughs> yo, and and also I don't know if you guys saw this, and I don't think this was intentional, but yeah. they played a tribute to Dragon Ball Z. Really, Godzilla was like, you feel that power? Uh-uh, I gotta get stronger. And he turned into fucking Goku and started fighting every Titan he could think of and then went into the fucking, uh, the chamber, you know, in, in, uh, Kami's world. Oh, the, the training chamber? Yeah, yeah, the fucking, uh, that shit where the gravity's there and you spend one day and it's a year and he got stronger. My man came out super Godzilla, super sane. And I'm sitting like, okay, God, God, Goku? Like, shit, you turn Goku red on us. Like, Godzilla, Godzilla God. <laughs> No, yeah, it, like it felt like he knew something was coming. Yeah. But it was also like he really loved Italy for some reason. Yo, <laughs> listen. So I, I was like, I'm going to Rome and just gonna stay yo, right so here. I like they this. have they have a cat bed for me and I'm good. <laughs> but like, yo, this is a good place to sleep. I'm gonna just sleep. I don't I don't know if it was if it's just me, but I'm watching this movie going, wait a minute. They realize that Godzilla's leveling up. He's getting stronger. No. And not one person is going. Why does he need to get stronger? What the fuck is down there? Go to phase two. Get some shit happening. We need to evacuate the planet now because I don't know what's about to come out this motherfucker. Search Hollow Earth. What's happening? Godzilla just chilling. I mean, King Kong's just chilling. Godzilla don't know shit about this. He ain't super sane. What's going on here? What's going on here? I'm sorry. This is not right. 
Yeah, <laughs> this is not the right. right. Godzilla don't just go around eating power planes. This ain't Godzilla one. This is the other one. After we blew him up, what happened? <laughs> yeah, they need to write a letter to Brazil. We apologize for not preparing. Because, yo, they destroyed Brazil. <laughs> yo, yo he, he's got Dilla Toretto. And everything. <laughs> yo, yo. I'm of two minds of this movie. Okay. This movie, for me, is more akin to how I felt about uh, King of the Monsters. Okay. And I, I'll, exp I'll explain it here. One side of me is like, yo, the minute got uh, the minute King Kong realized that the miniature ape was not on his side, he literally used him to beat the other two fucking apes. Yeah, that was dope. He beat two grown apes with a baby ape. <laughs> that shit I've never seen before in my life. And then the other <laughs> side of me is like, yo, Godzilla is way too agile. I don't like this motherfucking the swan dove off a of fucking thing is running around like, like, yo, fucking, we got this. Like, did, it's just something was, something was off about this. Yeah. Where it, they took too much. It hearkened a little too much to the old fucking Toho films. Where he was out there fighting stupid fucking monsters and doing dumb shit, dancing around and fucking, ha, ah, I got him. Like all, all those movies. And I don't know, I honestly can't say if I would have felt the same if I didn't see Godzilla minus one. It's a little, it's a little thing where. You saw the progression from Godzilla 2014, King of the Monsters, Godzilla versus Kong. And then Minus One comes out and you go, oh, you could take this seriously and make something good. And then you watch some of it and you're like, I understand it's, I understand it's entertainment. And I understand that giant monsters are fucking fun to watch fight. And yeah, like I said, watching Kong beat the shit out of people with a yeah. mini Kong, it's fucking hilarious. Yeah. But it's like, uh, just... I'm, I'm going to say it this way. I'm going to say it like a fat kid. It's like showing up and going, oh shit, it's ice cream day. Nice. And then you get to the front of the line and all they have left is pistachio and rum raisin. <laughs> Yeah. And you're like, ah, it's still ice cream day. But this isn't this there's better ice creams we could have had. Yeah. yeah. It's like knowing. It's like, oh man. We've had this before. They did it. They showed us it can happen. Yeah, because then that's all we get. <laughs> my number one complaint is this was this should have been called King Kong 2. Godzilla's showed up. Yeah, and that's the thing. Uh, did you guys know it was technically just supposed to be almost King Kong at one point? Like it was just gonna be a King Kong movie. Godzilla wasn't even gonna be a part of it. In a sense. Yo, Godzilla didn't need to be a part of. It. This is my main, my major complaint. We go into the third act. Scar King gets his shit beat out of him. Shimu does nothing. Then Little Kong breaks the fucking control panel. That the, the control crystal. And now Shimu's cool. Godzilla's got nothing to do. Khan's now the leader of the fucking apes down in Hollow Earth. And all that happened in 10 minutes. We spent an hour and a half to get to 10 minutes. The actual fight was like five minutes. Yeah. And they were like, oh, Khan can't stop them alone. Like, really? Because it really didn't look like he really needed all that much from Zilla. And yeah, and Zilla didn't look like his power upgrades helped him at all. Yeah. He was in people with... Yo. He fucking destroyed King Ghidorah with his... Uh, one of the heads with his atomic breath. He killed the Mutos with his atomic breath. Now it's leveled up and nothing. Yeah. They Qui-Gon Jinn, the fucking character. 
Only certain people die from the atomic breath. Nobody else. Shit. And, um... Kong was smart. Setting traps for the dogs and shit like that. Oh, the yeah, that was funny. That yeah. was funny. The one that fucking... one part that was like, oh, they knew to step over. Yeah. And Mini Kong was like, hey, bitch. Well, I mean, shit, if they're just as smart, then they got to realize, like, wait a minute. But when, um, fuck. Oh, when that other ape was yelling in his face and he just punched him? Yeah. Just decked him? That was hilarious. Yo, that, that had me died. I was like, <laughs> that's what you should do. It's like, no, 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 no. Word. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> I'm telling you, there there was there were some great things in it. Yeah, it, and the whole some shit. Yeah. you're like, wait, what? <laughs> a whole story was told in ape language and 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 Titan language, and we understood it. Yeah, despite the fact that they literally had Rebecca Ferguson or whatever her name is sit there and reiterate the entire story in an exposition dump. Yeah. So, which which I was confused because that crystal that the the bad ape had isn't that the same shit that's in Godzilla's axe? I mean King Kong's axe? No, they King all Kong's little... axe is is uh, one of the spines from Godzilla. Oh, I so, didn't. I didn't. Yeah. At first, when I watched the trailer, I didn't like the me Amy arm. And then they showed why they put the arm on him. And in my head, I was like, I don't think King Kong needed a mech suit to fight Zilla and Mecha Kong, Mecha Godzilla. You're just kind of like downplaying King Kong when it came to Godzilla. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, his arm was fucked up. So he no, no, no. I I get why he had it, but when they they like, oh, we made a oh, mech suit for him. It's like. Uh, you could have, you, you could have, you could have came up with a better idea and why they had a mech suit. I mean, yeah, so I thought the, I thought they were building just a giant robot. No, and they just retrofitted and said, "Well, fuck it, we'll give it to him." No, they were, they were building a suit for Kong to fight Godzilla and uh, the Mecha Godzilla. Yeah, no. they said it. He was too weak to fight, and I'm saying like, that shouldn't be the case. I mean, he clearly got it. He clearly. Well, lost yeah, it. we saw him get his no, no, ass kicked. No, no, he, he, no, he did. But what I'm saying is, he that shouldn't be the case because in Skull Island, he's killing fucking Titans, the same that were fighting in there. Like Godzilla put on a good fight against. I mean, King Kong put a, a good fight against Godzilla. I understand the Mecha Godzilla does the same shit as Godzilla. But King Kong should be at one point or another able to withstand them. Like he may not have powers to shoot shit, but he should be like tougher. Like his skin is harder to penetrate with the beam than some other shit. You know what I'm saying? Like he should have a level playing field than oh, he's just a giant ape and Godzilla is a fucking monster that has every you have Batman and King Kong and Superman and in fucking and Godzilla and King Kong ain't Bruce Wayne. That's yeah. the difference. Well, yeah. But I mean, there is a reason why God is in the front of Zilla's name. I hear you. Give me a second. All good. All good. What? What's your? They should uh, call him uh, Martin Luther the King Kong. It, he interjected for no reason. Jeez. Oh. Um, did, did you stay? Did you stay to the end for an end credit scene? There was no. There was no scene. Okay. Yeah, we look. We we looked it up just in case because it was like we wanted to make sure, and. I, I kind of like that, though, because now it leaves to interpretation of are they going to do something next, even though we now know they're doing something with Godzilla. But um, I want to know if they're going to do anything with Kong from here, because they do leave a lot more room to play around with with the idea of um, now Kong almost taking control of Hollow Earth. What's going to happen now? Is, he, is another threat going to appear out of nowhere type shit? Um, like, what other, what other threat is there? That's that's the issue though. That is the the only thing I can think of is destroyer. Yeah. Just send just send somebody else from out there. Well, no, and that's and that's yeah, that's what I was talking to my my boy about. That it's like, it, with these movies, the rule is it has to get bigger. Like the villain has to be something even crazier, and it's like, 
it has to come it has to come from above at this point. So um we shall see. We shall see. Oh, and we got we got Nikki in the chat. What's going on, Nikki? What's up? And if you're asking, this is this is Cap. <laughs> so Nikki has been has been enjoying our, our podcast lately. She's a new viewer to the channel. Oh. Yeah, I only show up on Tuesdays with the nerd shit. That's all I'm good for. <laughs> hey, he's he's very informative though. You just missed our discussion on X Men, and we're just finishing up now the conversation on Godzilla X Kong, the New Empire. No. I'm and, not. Uh, I don't know shit, man. <laughs> I just be talking sometimes. But it, it sounds like you be knowing what you're talking about, though. So we'll leave it. At th- we'll, we'll, we'll make it work like that. But no, again, um, I really enjoyed the movie. I thought I I went in not thinking I was gonna enjoy it because unfortunately. A lot of the fucking reviews were coming in like mixed, and that gave me a little worrisome. But uh, King Gador, Gador, King Cobra. <laughs> I, I want to think he's saying Gador. I hope he's yeah. saying Gador, uh, or however you spell it, is still a possibility to heal, possibly, possibly. But nah, Gador is dead. You don't think there's a way they could still do something with it, though? I mean, again, I in this lore, they, they, he literally fucking turned, he turned nuclear and melted his ass. Like that's it. He's done, yeah. though. We, we shall again. They need to make something crazy, though. Uh, but they have his DNA. Yo, that they do. Yeah. I'm telling you, they got to bring in destroyer. You know who? The, you know who I would really want to see. Oh. Ultraman, but that that's a little too much. Yeah, that's something that if this was still like, if this was still the classic movies, probably they would have done it. But now I don't know if we're gonna go into that in that route with all this. Yo, like just because of the... they got they got King of Doors, uh, or Ghidra as they yeah. call them in the movie, they got his DNA. True. You get backwards some shit. Make some like uh, what do you call it? Come up with some stupid ass reason and who knows? Hold on, I'm trying to see how. What uh, what rating did you give this out of ten? Out of ten, I would give it. I give it an eight. I think I got booed by my friends. Oh, let me let me pull up that the. Uh, the exact rating I gave him. Something tells me it's it's very low. If uh, <laughs> I put seven point five out of ten. Okay, so and I, I got booed. So that is that is not bad at all though, because I I feel like I would have probably given something um similar. I gave it an eight just to be a little a little like right there, because again I did enjoy the movie though. I really did enjoy the movie, but um. Yeah, seven point five works though. Yo, tell if you're in, if you're still in the chat, let us know what your your rating is. And the reason I didn't, the reason I go seven point five is because, and again, I'm probably just too old now for this shit. But people were clapping and cheering at the end of this movie. Yeah. We, we pretty much had a packed theater, which is weird. Yeah, where, yeah. <laughs> I haven't sat in a packed theater in a long time. Yeah. But people were like cheering at the end. Yeah. And for the first time, I wasn't one of them. I was in my head, I was almost like I almost felt like when you get on a plane and people fucking clap because the pilot landed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like he didn't land through turbulence. There was no he did what the fuck he's supposed to do. No, well, I'm still one of those I'm still one of those people that clap at the end of the flight. I'm sorry. Dude, you wider than I am, bro. No, see the, the problem is yo, that's like no no no. The problem why I clap is because most of the time I have flown, it's an international flight and there is fucking turbulence like a motherfucker. Yeah, turbulence <laughs> is not the pilot's fault. I don't and give a fuck. Turbulence doesn't hit as you touch the runway. He Still. didn't navigate through a fucking minefield. He didn't have a dog fight. Like, what the fuck you clapping for? Because I'm glad we are alive. That's why I clap. You're supposed to. Yo. 
Yo, next time I drink my bottle of water, <laughs> when I finish it, I expect claps because I didn't drown. <laughs> Fuck out of here because we alive. Yeah. You're supposed to be. That's not a, that's a no shit. Bro. <laughs> no, there's a lot of shit that can go wrong. So we clap for thank you for getting us down safely. So do you clap when you get off a bus, when you get off the train, when you when you get out the Uber? No. When you cross the street. <laughs> like, come on, dog. You're way more you're way more likely to run into problems in those areas than you are in a flight. In, I don't. in the state in the safest statistical <laughs> fucking means of transport. Too chef. Too chef. Uh <laughs> Toast says, he compared to the others, I say 7.8 to 8. Okay, uh, that works. Uh, yeah, he claps when the food comes. <laughs> I do not clap when the food comes. I just, be again, I clap for the plane just because, hey, we survived. But fuck it. That, uh, that does Yo, put into perspective, though. Like, damn, there's a lot more things in there. Yo, right, I, right. Tell me what the fuck you survived. Again, I I just it it, it it it's especially after because there was one flight coming back from Ecuador that we passed through Panama. The shit went down two hundred feet in less than a second because we went through horrible fucking turbulence. So, all right, turbulence is a drop of pressure, and you hit a pocket with the air pressure keeping you up. Dipped, so you dipped down to the correct pressure to keep the plane up. That's all that happened. No, we thought we were fucking dying because that shit went. It's like, and it's that it's that quick. It's like back in, then, it's fucking back to normal. But in those fucking seconds, you start to think, well, did you clap then? No, that's the time. <laughs> that's the fucking appropriate time. Not four hours later. When the rest of your flight was crystal clear and fucking good. Now, again, I don't mind you getting off the plane and thanking the stewardess or the whatever they call them now, the, the air hostess, and Wait, thanking the captain. Don't call them for, I, yo, I don't know. It's 2024. I don't know what the fuck anybody calls themselves anymore. Touche. It's probably something different now, but yeah. let us know if you know in the comment section down below because I did not know there was a different name for it. But, but um, I can understand you telling around like, "Thank you, thank you for the service, thank you for the flight," and yeah. well, I get all that. But the turbulence happened four hours ago. You should have clapped then, when when you went down thinking you were gonna die, and you realized, "Oh no, we're fine." Hey, thank you, Captain, for getting us through that without hitting the ground. Not you know when you clap later, when the captain's asleep and the autopilot has been on. I'm sorry. You know when you clap? When? When you go to a fucking fast food joint and they give you a real fucking straw and not one of the paper shits. That's when you clap. Yes! They know I'm a man. You know when you clap? When you finish the third episode of an animated series, then you realize that people are taking this serious and it's actually good. That's when you clap. Now I get why you guys told me to watch it. My bad. Word. Not bad. You know when you clap? When? When a when an ape is yelling in your face and King Kong punches him in the shit mid mid yell. That's when you clap. You know when you clap? When you're the guy who hates when they give the protagonist a kid that he's got to watch, but part way into meeting the kid, the protagonist picks up the kid and beats the fuck out of two other people with the kid. Then you clap. Yeah, man, shit. And again, Not because you know, the, if you don't get the plane drop, watch either Godzilla vs. Kong or go back and watch our summation of the film. You know when you clap when a, when a bird goes in your plane and they land you in the Hudson River and everybody's safe. Then you're like, ah, thank you. <laughs> Was it Captain Seymour Phillips or something like that? No, well, well, it wasn't Captain Phillips, but it was... Oh. Uh, Geez, Sully, Captain Sully. Yeah, there you yeah, go, yeah. see? You go. I had to think because Tom Cruise played them both. <laughs> Tom Cruise, Tom Hanks. <laughs> Tom Hanks played them both. Tom Cruise played Tom Hanks. <laughs> you, know, 
You know when you clap on the on the plane, Ray? When? When you see a military member who's either leaving his home or coming back to his home from a deployment. That's when you clap. Word. You know when you boo? I'll tell you when you boo on a plane. <laughs> You're booing on a plane? There's one time when you boo on a plane. Okay. When a man and or a woman gets down on their knee to propose to whoever they're with, and that person says no, then you boo the entire fucking flight. Oh, wait a That's second. Right. Has that happened? Huh? Has that happened? I mean, statistically, it must happen. Oh, my God. Imagine, imagine doing that at the start of the flight. Like, hey, before, before, before we go, will you marry me? Yo, can you? No. Yo, think about it. Think, <laughs> no. But think about how much that makes sense. You think that you're going to propose. You're going on a nice vacation. You're going to propose at the beginning. She says yes. She's got three hours of staring at the ring and fucking being all in heaven. You land. Your vacation's fucking great. Why wouldn't you do it at the beginning? And she says no. Now it's just awkward. And it's like, well. Yeah. Now it's too late to cancel. <laughs> Now she's off banging the fucking scuba instructor and you can't get anybody at the bar. Yep. She kicked you out of the hotel room, so you gotta find another fucking suite. Yep. And, and you, you gotta see her on the way back, because now you guys still got the same flight. Then you go around and you volunteer for that emergency exit shit. And when the turbulence comes, open up the door for close that motherfucker up. She missed the plane. And that, yo, that's that's reason 147 why I don't date, why I won't get married. Word. Fucking bitch. And that's why you clap. That's why you clap. No, you boo in that situation. You don't clap. No, you, you clap when you throw out the plane. <laughs> yes! <coughs> they did it! Fucking bitch. You know when you clap? When it's the end of the episode on the Knucklehead Network. Yeah. And on that note, it's your friendly neighborhood knuckleheads signing out. Peace, everybody.